When people talk about wartime innovation, they often think of massive factories or secret research labs. But honestly, some of the most remarkable feats of engineering didn't happen in labs at all. They happened in muddy fields, shattered villages, and makeshift camps where soldiers had nothing but scraps, grit, and desperation. One of those feats was creating a working generator, yes, a functioning power source, from nothing more than junk metal, scavenged wire, and raw ingenuity. This wasn't theory. It was survival. And what those soldiers achieved still has lessons that could keep you alive today when everything else fails. During World War II, reliable electricity was a luxury especially on the front lines or in occupied areas cut off from supply lines. Field radios, medical equipment and lighting all needed power. When the diesel ran out or supply convoys didn't make it through, soldiers couldn't afford to sit in the dark. They had to make their own solutions. That's when improvisation became a survival skill. With enemy fire nearby and rations running low, they scavenged everything. Old vehicle parts, rusted iron plates, broken fans, and copper wire stripped from bombed-out houses. The battlefield itself became a hardware store. In one recorded case from the North African campaign, Allied soldiers built a makeshift generator from a captured truck alternator, a bicycle frame, and a few iron pipes. It wasn't elegant, but it worked. The soldiers could charge batteries, run a field radio, and even power a small lamp at night. What made it impressive wasn't the sophistication, it was that it worked reliably under brutal conditions, with tools barely fit for farm repairs. A generator, at its core, is simple science. Electromagnetic induction. When a coil of wire moves through a magnetic field, it produces electricity. That's it. No magic, no mystery. What those wartime improvisers understood, even without access to textbooks, was that they didn't need a factory-grade dynamo. They just needed something to spin magnets around wire fast enough to create current. They'd start with an old alternator, or, well, even a broken motor from a downed vehicle. Alternators are reversible. Feed mechanical motion into one, and you get electrical power out. If no alternator was available, some even rewound motors by hand, using copper from burnt-out transformers or, you know, communications wire. The magnet cores could be salvaged from anything. Door hinges, radio parts, or steel rods heated and magnetized with friction. Then came the problem of motion. In the absence of engines, soldiers turned to human or wind power. Bicycle frames were perfect for this. By welding a simple stand and connecting the rear wheel to a pulley or belt drive, they could spin the alternator with pedal power. It wasn't glamorous, but, honestly, it could generate 12 volts, enough to charge a field battery or run a radio transmitter. Let's break down how it typically came together. First, they located a source of copper wire. Burned out motors, telephone cables and destroyed vehicles were prime targets. Then they salvaged a metal frame, often from broken tools or spare weapon mounts, to hold the generator assembly in place. An alternator or rewound motor was bolted to this frame. The next step was creating motion. Soldiers would rig up a belt system using strips of old tires, rope or leather to connect a rotating part. A bicycle pedal, a small propeller or even a hand crank to the alternator shaft. 
Once assembled, the generator was connected to a makeshift rectifier, or sometimes directly to lead acid batteries from vehicles. If the voltage was a bit too high, they used resistors made from pencil graphite or even soaked cloth strips to bleed off excess current. It was rough, it was dangerous, but, well, it worked. A British unit stationed in Italy famously used a water wheel system built from tin barrels and wooden slats to power their generator from a nearby stream. Another unit in the Pacific used the propeller of a grounded plane to create a wind-driven turbine, feeding just enough power to light up a small perimeter camp. These weren't engineers. They were problem solvers with the deadline measured in survival. For modern survivalists, or anyone interested in off-grid living, the same principles really do apply. If you ever find yourself in a power outage or a remote area, you can create a simple generator using discarded parts. The easiest route is to repurpose a car alternator. It's built for this sort of thing. Mount it securely, connect a pulley system to something that spins like a bicycle or water wheel, and wire the output to a battery with proper polarity. Spin it fast enough and... Well, you'll start generating usable current. If you don't have an alternator, even a DC motor from an old power tool can act as a generator. The faster you spin it, the more voltage it produces. For instance, an electric drill motor can generate about 12 volts when spun at moderate speed, enough to charge a small device through a regulator. Always use diodes to prevent backflow, and never exceed the rated voltage of your batteries. These lessons from the field aren't just for nostalgia. They're a blueprint for independence. What stands out most in these stories isn't just the engineering, it's the mindset. Those soldiers didn't wait for supplies or orders. They looked around understood the fundamentals of energy and motion, and acted. That's the essence of survival, adapting under constraint. The real takeaway is that knowledge weighs nothing, yet it can generate power, literally. Understanding how machines convert motion into electricity can mean the difference between being stranded in darkness and having a functioning lifeline. If you're serious about survival, study how these systems work. Try building a simple hand crank generator from spare parts at home. Experiment with wind, pedal or water-driven systems. The soldiers who came before us proved that resourcefulness is humanity's greatest renewable energy. So, the next time you see a pile of scrap metal, don't see junk, see potential power. The story of how soldiers made working generators from nothing but debris is a reminder that necessity sharpens the mind more than comfort ever will. These forgotten field hacks still have value today, not just as history, but as tools for resilience. If you found this story useful and want to explore more real wartime survival engineering that still matters today, make sure to subscribe to Warfield Survival and share this with someone who appreciates true ingenuity born from hardship. Knowledge like this deserves to stay alive. <laughs>